given me the return ticket where you're going. This is a one-way journey. Straight down! the central base of Games Master's Little Fun Club. Upon joining, you too can get a shiny badge with bright colours, a hairy badge with moving eyes, and more fun than you ever had with Freddy Krueger. Tonight's show is a Sonic special, and tickling your laughter tonsils, we have our first challenge. So let's go over to Games Master. My first challenge is on Sonic 3. I utilize the special features available on the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, allowing players to compete as Knuckles. Our contestant's aim will be to finish the first level as fast as possible. Though the landscape will be well known, our players, used to Sonic spin attack, will now have to familiarize themselves with Knuckles' lesser known maneuver of drifting. Something I've never had a problem with. Indulging in the first of our hedgehog head-to-heads, we have Tom Stewart and Daniel Wareham. <laughs> As many people know, I have a bit of a thing for wool and a cornucopia of variations you can get with this fine substance. Now, you've been kind enough to bring a little pattern book. I have, yeah. Would you like to select? What's your favourite pattern in there? I'm quite keen on this one, Dominic. Let's hold this one up here, okay. What does this one say? It says, add a little floral decoration for a unique sweater. Excellent. And as you can see, this is actually Carol Vorderman. Uh, Daniel, what about you then? What's your favourite um, pattern in this fine tome? Um, I'd say this one, Dominic. A colourful sweater that's Let's in a hold, class hold of its own. Oh, yes. Lovely. College days, I think they call that one. Marvellous. Right. Well, while Tom, Daniel and I got all yarned up, let's take a look at the latest news. You know, we keep carving out new horizons for ourselves. Yes, it's him, that bloke who was in that film and hasn't worked since 1980-something Star Wars. That was it, yes. The 75-year-old Mark Hamill is starring in Wing Commander 3, the latest CD-ROM game to have loads of movie bits, iffy acting and cringing dialogue. Yeah, well, people were dying out there, you son of a bitch. Well, I'm sure the game will be brilliant. And talking of that bloke, this is the latest Star Wars game, Dark Forces. Using a similar engine to Doom, people who get their rocks off to this stuff claim it's even better than Doom 2 released yesterday. In February, you can find it for yourself. Into London arcades last week marks the latest Sega experience, Desert Tank. It's the latest game to use Sega's spanky Model 2 graphics as seen in Daytona Racing. If it looks very butch, that's because some military bloke helped make it. Right, we're just about to play Sonic 3 with Knuckles. Helping me describe the action is the man who made bandanas fashionable for one week, Dave Perry. Dave, um, give our challengers some tips here. Well, because we're playing it through the Sonic and Knuckles carts, what our challengers are going to find they can do with the Knuckles character is they can glide and they can scale walls. They don't have to worry about jumping over them. He's a little bit slower than Sonic, but he's got a lot more tricks up his sleeves. OK, thank you very much, Dave. Tom is going first. Whoever gets to do it in the fastest time will get the joystick. Best of luck, Tom. Your time starts now. OK, so into those springs because they push you backwards and they do cost you valuable seconds. Okay, best of luck, Daniel. 51 seconds to beat. Your time starts now. <laughs> so, after Daniel is Knuckles, what did you do about Knuckles' hair there, Dave? When he first appeared in Sonic 3, it was certainly a lot more spiky. 
stickier than that. Yeah, he's yeah. looking a bit lank out of that. Yeah, he's using a, bit, using a bit of wax, I think. All right, 15 seconds gone. Oh, there's those springs you were talking about. He's lost there. a bit of time because he hit a baddie just now, and now he's run into a spring, which has pushed him back. And already he's probably lost as much time as Tom. I reckon they're, they're pretty close. They're both as bad as each other, I think, so far, Dave. I reckon. Yeah, but of course, he's losing watch. in time. That guy really can't watch this, Dave. Oh, uh, no, he's lost it completely. He hasn't made it up the incline. It's so that got a bit of propulsion. Oh, dear. I'm going. 48. And now he can't, get, he can't get up the tube there either. So Daniel stopped again. Daniel challenges over. Tom is the winner. Well done, Tom. Fine luck, Daniel. Now, uh, Tom, that wasn't the closest uh, of challenges we've had. Did, uh, were you ever worried at any point? I was worried up until the tree when he went wrong. He played very well. I think, I think you've been far too nice to Daniel, because I thought he was pants, <laughs> actually. Um, Daniel, we uh, stopped your challenge after 51 seconds, because we realised that unless you could travel back in time, there was no chance that uh, you could win. Give me your excuse, and it better be good. Um, I don't really have an excuse. I just have to lay my head low for a while and just get back to that joypad. All right, well, thank you very much, Daniel and Tom. Tonight's Golden Joystick winner is Tom. And let's have another round of applause for Tom and Daniel. Well, as Daniel trudges off, a sad, lonely figure, probably wishing he'd never applied in the first place, let's smile our way into reviews. First up, surprise, surprise, another blank check for Mr. Sega, but is Sonic Triple Trouble on the Game Gear worth your pennies? It's the usual Sonic fare, run around platforms, pick up rings, jump on springs and speed around with your red sneakers. It's great stuff. Generally, I've never really liked Sonic games, you know, just too much tedious running to the left and right, picking up rings. But I found myself playing the Game Gear game for quite a while, actually, at least until the batteries run out. And you've got some great power-ups, you've got little jets, jet boots and stuff, you can, you've even got a snowboard. Cool Ace Sonic. It's uh, easily the best platform game on the Game Gear, certainly. It's got incredible graphics. It's um, more of the same old Sonic story. This one looks pretty close to the Mega Drive original, and uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. From the maker of Cool Sport and Aladdin, is Earthworm Jim just another platform game or the platform game? He's got guns, he's got a like, fierce display of firepower just in this one tiny little gun. He can swing across bridges, he can jump huge chasms. Basically, this guy can do just about anything. It's got a very nice linear feel. You always know where you're going and you always know where you've got to get to. There's also bags of humour, lots of inventiveness, totally different perspectives like the into the screen bit where you have to fly down tunnels picking things up. There's so many puzzles you have to solve and so many different sub-games that you've been playing this for weeks. Finally, take a cute character, add some platforms and cook in sequel batter. But is Bubsy too a mouth-watering morsel or lean cuisine? Bubsy as a character has certainly become more rounded. He's got a great line in patois and he's got some very funny wisecracks and ideas. But as a game, it's really not coming together. Half the time, you've got no idea where you're going. You run from left to right, um, jumping over obstacles, leaping from platform to platform, often blindly, as you can't really tell where you're going. The game is, frankly, tedious, and it's certainly worse than its prequel. Compared to the likes of Earthworm Jim, Bubsy 2 just doesn't stand out. Earthworm Jim's got a lot going for originality, whereas Bubsy's going over the same old stuff again. Maybe I'll be saying this about Earthworm Jim 2 when it comes out. Tonight's special guests are being scrubbed and washed, ready to be brought to my abode. Let's go over to Games Master and find out what they'll be playing. Oh, I do like a bit of speed. Tonight we have just that, as we burn rubber and torch tiles with the new Super Nintendo game, Street Racer. In this rough and tumble rolling rumble, player one will take the role of the unsavory Hodger, while our second, the race ace, will play as Biff. Players should aim for the blue marks on the track, Crossing these will give them nitro with which to boost their speed. The race is over four laps, and the golden joystick will be reserved the player who comes first. There used to be the two heartthrobs in Biker Grove. Now, of course, they are rap stroke, dance stroke, funk stroke, death metal crossover legends. Please welcome PJ and Duncan. <laughs> PJ, 
how, how do we rumble then? Rumble? Yeah. You know it, Dominic. Don't no, I don't. Show me how to do it. To the left, like that. Because we're, 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 right we're all ready to do it now. And that's okay. it. That's it, really. Even a bit, we bit of a showed you in rehearsals. I mean, you paid us to show <laughs> you in rehearsals. He's much <laughs> better than us, I guess, I tell you. Because yeah. the, the single was a, was a massive hit. Was there, I'll ask you, Duncan, the other members of Biker Grove, did they hate you all because of the success of the single? Yeah, pretty much so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did they? Yeah. So I guess they're just generally like losers. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, no comment. Because yeah. uh, that, that girl with the ginger hair, she really hates you. Oh, yeah, she hates Declan. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> all right, while I continue to speak slowly for my little Geordie pals, <laughs> we'll take a quick break. <laughs> show we're very lucky to have a special guest today Tamla Motown stroke grunge crossover experts PJ and Duncan they're about to play street racer with me is Brad Burton who will be helping me describe the action Brad you know every single word to let's get ready to rumble don't you Dominic, chill out, man. Chill out. Look, listen, your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, everyone's got to be an AK lover. <laughs> he does. He does. <laughs> All you. right, listen. Listen, Brad, can you give PJ and Duncan any tips on the game? You certainly can. Use your special weapons, use your nitros when you're supposed to. Don't be wasting them. That's a crucial part of the game. That's it. Go All for right. it, kids. Thanks very much, Brad. Okay, best of luck, PJ and Duncan. Let's start the race. Let's okay. rumble. PJ is best. The ball tape broke on the bottom of the screen. Duncan is Roger, the Indian looking bloke with a hat. Screen. We can see what position they're in. A little thing that says P6 is there for Duncan and P8 for PJ. Brad. Check PJ out. He's there. Big. He's got a big stick, right? And he's, you know, he's just perfect. He can give it anyone a good roll and knock them out for six. But the thing is, you've got to get, get close to him, really. He's miles away. You know, if you've got close to Duncan, he's not going to hit him. He certainly is. And at the moment, we've got uh, PJ in last place. Duncan is in second last place. But What's this guy doing? Duncan, he's all over the place. Seems like the guy's been drinking and driving. And that was it. Uh, Duggan there, but it didn't quite work. It looks to me like uh, and he's overtaking him. He's overtaking him though. PJ is in seventh place. Duggan is in last place now, Brad. Bad call, bad call. Check it out. Duggan's up to six. Last lap. We're on the last lap. Duggan is up to sixth place. So now PJ is still back in last place. PJ, PJ, get a grip, man. You know what I mean? I mean, if the guy could drive as good as he can run. <laughs> you know the deal, anyway, Doug. So Duggan is in sixth place, and uh, PJ's been up to seventh though now. I see he's called it a day now, Dominic. He's bought a beauty from Cabo. He's up to fifth now. He's up to third. Now, uh, PJ, you do know that's probably the easiest challenge that we've had in the whole series. I'm just terrible at it, that's really it. <laughs> if, I, if you had a beat him or something like that, I'd be all right. But we didn't. Nah, no. <laughs> you blatantly put a racing game on, didn't you, Dominic? You're not not very good. <laughs> now, Duggan, you were third. Yeah. Still rubbish. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but better than PJ. Yeah, I'm only going any good at racing games. Yeah. That's it. You're only, you're only good at racing games? Well, I'm only... Better at this and only average at racing. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, thanks so much for uh, joining us, but it was a pretty poor performance, which means that you have to go into the cage! <laughs> And there we have it, living proof that celebrity status does not prevent you looking a bit iffy when your pants are on the line. However, we can eradicate those embarrassing moments in the consultation zone. Welcome to my consultation zone, where once again I should provide a lifeline to games players drowning in the sea of ignorance. Who's first at Campbell Ball? Games Master. I've got Mega Man X, but it doesn't seem to have fireballs like Street Fighter 2 does. Don't be so wet. Of course it does. Here's how to get them. After feverishly killing all the bosses and collecting every sub tank, ignore your better judgment and enter the armored armadillo. While your energy is still strong, ride the minecart until it comes off the rails. Jump up and collect the pods you'll find there. Then throw yourself off the ledge. Do this four times, and upon collecting the pod for the final time, the bloody Dr. White will take pity on you and give you a special fireball power up. How's that? Oh, thanks, Games Master. Who else is adrift? Oi, Games Master, I want a level select on Jungle Book for the Mega Drive. Will you give me what I need? Oh dear, you are a sad 
fellow, aren't you? Pause the game and enter this melodious code. A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. And lo and behold, you'll be granted access to all the wonderful secrets of the game. Frankly, I find this cheat barely necessary. Get it? Cheers. I spy another bedraggled games player in need of resuscitation. What's the problem? Games master, I really need your help. On John Manor's football in the 3DO, my quarterback keeps hanging hits. Can you help me? You're having trouble with those funny shaped walls, are you? Here's what to do. When on the fence, call a pass play, a deep hands vessel. After hiking the ball, run about 20 yards or so backwards and throw it to one of your deep receivers. They'll almost always catch it for big yards. Easy when you know how. Nice one, Games Master. You're terrific. Well, that's enough charity work for the day. I'm afraid the rest of you will just have a sink or swim on your own. Excuse me, please. Can I ask you a quick question? About uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. What's, what's he on about? What's he doing? And the sun is that there. That was the only person in the world who doesn't know who Sonic is. Or maybe she's forgotten because she's old. With the release next week of Sonic v Knuckles, even pensioners will have no excuse. Sonic's first appearance was in 1991 when Sega finally unleashed a character to rival Mario. Struggling manfully against the evil schemes of Dr. Robotnik and pursuing a strange obsession with rings to the delight of innuendo writers everywhere, the adorable tyke was an instant hit with 4 million copies sold. Sonic's next outing was in the obscurely titled Sonic 2. This time the cuddly cutie was accompanied by Tails, a lovable little fox that used his tail as a helicopter blade. The release of Sonic 2 was accompanied by the biggest publicity blitz ever seen in the video game world. There was even Sonic Bards. We must have Sonic 3! We must have Sonic 3! Yes, undeterred by the enormous profits generated so far, Sega courageously went ahead and released Sonic 3. With split-screen play, battery save options and masses of levels, Sonic 3 was widely regarded as the best Sonic title to date. Sonic 3 also saw the debut of Knuckles, the naughty little echidna who messed up Sonic's life. Sega TV! 1993 also saw the release of Sonic Spinball, Sonic CD, Sonic the Arcade Game, and the most original release in terms of gameplay, Sonic 3 Minute Pasta. Which brings us 26 million cards and over a billion quid later to Sonic and Knuckles. Well, what's this one all about? Backward compatibility, which doesn't mean making friends with thick people. It means that when you plug in a Sonic 3 card, you can play that game as Knuckles. Or if you plug in Sonic 2, you can play that game as Knuckles as well. As well as breathing new life into the previous game, Sonic and Knuckles is a new Sonic adventure in its own right. You've got a new character who's got different moves to Sonic. You've got loads of new levels like this one, the Sand Dunes, and a new bonus level called Boing. And of course, Dr. Robotnik's back. Now after all that, everyone surely must know who Sonic is, but well, we asked Joan Collins for her opinion. Do you know who Sonic the Hedgehog is? I beg your pardon? Sonic the Hedgehog. I haven't a clue. Today's final challenge will feature Sonic's latest fluffingly, money-spinningly outing. Let's go over to Games Master to find out what it is. What better way to end this Sonic Spectacular than with a challenge on the game at the heart of the commotion, Sonic and Knuckles. The challenge is to collect as many rings in 45 seconds as possible, playing either as Sonic or Knuckles. I'll leave it to our contestants to decide which prickly personality they prefer. So please welcome for this final challenge, Sam Riley, Scott Naylor and Phil Duffy. Okay, Sam, let's start with you. Who's your most fanciable bloke in the world? Dean Kane. Dean Kane from the, the TV Superman. Have you ever noticed that when he's dressed up as Clark Kent and when he's dressed up as Superman, he actually looks identical? You know I think? Yeah, good thing. Um, Scott, we've seen you on Games Master before. You beat the, uh, the Scottish Nintendo champion. And you are an Ice-T fan? Yeah. Yep. yeah, I like Ice-T. Have, uh, have you got a gang yourself? No. <laughs> All right, and Phil, finally, who's your most fanciable female? Uh, Lauren from Neighbours. And we actually had Lauren on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and uh, she said she quite fancied you as well, which is completely bizarre. Okay, right, uh, so uh, Sam, you're going to go first if you'd like to take your place, and uh, Phil and Scott just hang on behind, and we'll go up to the commentary position.
And sharing my monitor is Games Master's very own Andy Hutchison. Andy, were you in a gang when you were little? Yeah, I was in the first third electoral scouts, and we used to terrorise the local neighbourhood by collecting news newspapers from their doorsteps. They were always the worst, those ones. Uh, any tips on, on Sonic Vinatals? Well, run fast, collect rings, avoid bad things. Very concise, Andy. OK, we're going to have uh, Sam go first. Each contestant has 45 seconds in which to collect as many rings as they possibly can. Best of luck, Sam. Your 45 seconds begins now. <laughs> OK, off goes Sonic. Oh, taking a bit of time to take those couple of rings, Ed. She missed oh, one. Right. You've got to watch out for those butterflies floating up in the air. They can really... Be... Now, she stopped to get a spin start there, Andy. That's right. Yeah, you can really loop that loop. It's going to come to a special level. Oh, dear. 50 seconds. Oh, but it's the whole of the rings there. Five seconds begins now. Hey, Andy, hasn't missed one now. Got to implode off those fungi. He's really got to power up. Zoom round that loop. I've got a good feeling about Scott, actually. He's gunning for it. I think he's going to do the business. He's got 25 rings already. He's only got 50 seconds. And invincibility. Very important, because those butterflies blowing up there can be a lot of serious grief. And true of course, if you get hit, you lose your rings. That's right. He's got a 10 ring there. He's got a 41, and he's got... Seconds begins now. Well, they've got to really make use of these toadstools. That's the secret. Again, carbon copy start. Same yeah. as previous two challenges. Up in the air, yeah. Nothing new here, Andy. No, absolutely not. A bit of a copy cap, but then they get the invisibility. 25 rings, you can see the number in the top left hand oh, corner. Quite sick. Can have someone's eye out with those? They certainly could, Andy. Oh, dear, that's a very sub Oh, no, the that's a good one. Played, Phil. Okay, now we'll start with you, Sam. I thought that was quite a good score. Where did you go wrong, do you think? I think it was on the mushrooms. Oh, you went along, because I reckon that's what slowed you down as well, Scott, yeah? The pesky mushrooms got me as well. I know, we've, we've all <laughs> problems with mushrooms apart from you. Yeah. Phil, no problem at all with the mushrooms. A few of them did get me. Well, I've got good and bad news for you, actually, Phil. The good news is, of course, that you won the challenge. The bad news is, you know, I said that Lauren actually fancied you. I actually caught it wrong, it was actually me that you fancied. Um, so I'm really sorry about that, uh, Phil. But you can console yourself with the fact that you have won the Games Masters Golden Joystick! <laughs> That's it for another show. I'm off to make you burp just when you get to snog that girl from accounts. See you later. Bye-bye.